other limb. Once you see the orange, you know it's orange. It's not lime. It's not a graft. That's what it is. But that's it. You bring forth after your kind. So if you've looked at your previous generations, your father's generation, your mother's generation, our forebears' generations, and you found found that maybe unfortunately no female was married, but they had children. No male was married, but they had children. Every male in that family died at 55. Everybody had a poverty mindset. They started with property and they ended up paying rent. And you say, wow, it's now my turn. These are the demons that haunted my family. This is the mindset. This is the genome, the DNA that was encoded in my family. You need to run to God and ask for his help and clutch into what we call the vicarious sacrifice, the finished work of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our Messiah, that he broke that power of sin so that you can be free. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if not, it goes down generations because we bring forth after our kind. There are families where they had a lot of money. Today they are broke. You bring forth after your kind. If you check, it's like that. There are families where the great-grandfather was an alcoholic, grandfather was an alcoholic, father was an alcoholic or is an alcoholic. Son is drinking happily and he says he's one for the road. He's one for the road. And if he goes to church, he tries to defend it by saying Jesus turned water into wine. I don't know, but I think when you on something quickly. I don't think it ferments so fast. But that's my. But ladies and gentlemen, if you know that that is the kind that brought you, then sometimes you can rise up to say, the kind stops here. The evil stops here. My next generation will be a new generation. Through me, there will be the rising of a new generation of change. Because if not, you'll be at the beggar's table and the receiver's end of the conveyor belt, always a consumer and never a producer. So this was a principle. The third principle, okay, so the first one was that brown earth is bringing forth green grass. The second one is that everything brings according to its kind. So what kind are you? What kind am I? The third one, it says, whose seed is in itself? <laughs> whose seed is inside itself, not outside? Ladies and gentlemen, as I said in my Bible, and I believe it totally, in the Gospel of Acts, in the book of Acts, which is the fifth book in the New Testament, after the Angel, after the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the fifth one is called the Acts of the Apostle, A-C-T-S, the doings of God. In chapter 17 or thereabout, it says God foreordained the boundaries of nations. People thought they demarcated us by political partitioning of Africa, Francophone, Lusophone, French, English, Portuguese. Beyond that, God knew what he was doing. And in every nation, there is enough wealth and resources for the empowerment and the full expression and the self-actualization of every citizen. That's how God did it. Some people, it's the atmosphere. Some, it's the height. As I said some weeks ago, I was in Addis Ababa about two, three weeks ago, and I wondered, I felt I was dying. I was breathless. I didn't know that I was eight to 9,000 feet above sea level. Then a friend of mine reminded me, that is why they are always winning the long distance races. And that is why in West Africa, we are always winning the sprints. So God gave them altitude, and they win the long distance. We are basically flat, and we do the sprints. Some, so every nation, and the nation is made up of people, so in every boundary, every demographic, topographical area, there is enough. We need to look for the seed inside. The seed is not outside. From Genesis, the seed is not in slavery. The seed is not in reparation. The seed is not in uh, retribution. The seed is in itself. So it can look inward and trust God's grace to come out. So he begins to sing. She begins to write poems. She begins to plait hair. He begins to play football. And he sees that he's embedded with divine godly talents. And as the Bible puts it, and I totally believe it, ladies and gentlemen, the gift of a person makes room for them and brings them before the mighty. Your seed of greatness is inside you. Because without a seed, there is no fruit. 
Without a seed, there is no harvest. Without a seed, there is no fruit. What are some of the thoughts about seed? And I want to deal with that before I end. The seed must be sown. The seed must be nurtured. The seed must be left to grow. The seed must be put in a proper soil. The soil must be tended. There must be proper atmospherics. And finally, it must be watered. There can be human watering, but what is better than the rain of God, the blessing of God, that even when you are asleep, God is watering. When people think you are dead and dry, God is watering because you're in your winter months of your life. But springtime, summertime, harvest time is coming. When God saw that it was not good for Adam to be alone, in our, the Genesis account of the Bible, which I believe is very true, God, Adam named the animals, Mr. and Mrs. Antelope, male and female dog, male and female chicken, male and female whatever. And it says for Adam there was not a suitable companion. It says that God brought his companion from inside. The seed is inside. He didn't import it from China. He brought it from inside out. And ladies and gentlemen, the, sometimes people want external joy. They want somebody to carry caricature for them to laugh. But you can make yourself joyful. Nobody can make you more joyful than you can make yourself. Sometimes in our religious settings, I hear this phrase. People say, I see you climbing. I see you rising. I see you going. Permit me to say with all due respect, nobody can see you rising higher than you can see yourself rising higher until you see yourself and the, the desire and build the picture of a preferred future you will be waiting and when people see you they don't give you what makes you go forward you got to come can you do it yes brown can bring forth green you bring forth after your kind and the seed is within yourself i remember some time when corn was harvested in the second world war i wasn't born by then but i read it in the 40s 45 in Russia and later they were planted in the 80s and they brought forth because there is no telling the power in a seed. It's the divine decoding of your greatness in you. You may not fit in the mold of a particular kind of educational structure. You may not fit in the mold that says if you are doing maths, you cannot do literature. And if you are doing chemistry, you cannot do history. Those are pre-organized forms. But you are bigger than those organized forms because it's your gift that makes a room for you more than the pre-designed examination questions. The ball is always in your court because at your creation and my creation, God Almighty said three things. Brown, bring forth green. If God said it, I can do it. Number two, bring forth after your kind. I'm not going to bring substandard anywhere in the world. My kind is great. And when I link myself to Jesus Christ, it's the Jesus kind, the God kind, the good kind. And thirdly, the seed is in myself. Yes, I may get assistance and help from outside and partnerships and interventions and donor agencies and all that, but the seed of my greatness is in myself. And I must look to that seed, put it in the soil, let it go, tend it, water it, patiently, consistently wait for the harvest because when the fruit comes, it is far bigger than the seed. And because the cycle will not end, inside that fruit, there are loads more seeds. I can be fruitful. I can multiply. I can fill God's earth. I can take charge and dominion wherever I am. And I can experience the jubilee of God. I'm going to stop here for tonight. I trust God by next week we'll be talking about Easter by the grace of God. And um, we will look further. But just know that these are the principles that we should live by. And everything about your life is guided by this. You are brown, bring forth green. You bring forth after your kind. So if you waste your life, you're going to bring forth after your kind. But the seed of your greatness is inside you. It is not in Western Union transfer. It is not in MoneyGram. It is not in people helping you. Until I come your way next week, this is Pastor Bob saying, God bless us all. God keep our nation great. And may we come to that point where we understand these realities. Have a good evening and good night. Up on GRTS is Lantern Reflections. Next.